Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Esport Company's Spring High School Rocket League season. I am a familiar face, Sizz. Joining alongside me today is not such a familiar face, but the legendary man himself. Foof, how are we doing today, man? I gotta say, I'm doing amazing. I am here. I am ready to get some Rocket League action underway. And we are kicking off week one, what is going to be a six week race between these seven teams. And so, looking at it here, we are starting off with a hotly contested one, sis. Yes, indeed. If we're gonna take a look now at the schedule for today, we have. Obviously, a name that's pretty well familiar around here is the Pin Trafford Warriors going up against the Gateway Gators. Last season, I didn't get to see a lot of the Gators play. So interesting to see how this first match will go. In game number two, we've got Somerset and Berlin Brothers Valley, another matchup that is very well known around here. In game number three, Foof, who do we got going on? Got Hollis Daysburg and Bishop Carroll going head to head in the final match of the day. That means Forest Hills on the outside looking in with a nice bye week early on. So, you know, looking at it here with six weeks, is, do you think you want your bye weeks earlier or later in a season? I mean, I feel like both of them have pros and cons. Your first week, you get to see everyone. You get to see all of your opponents, see how they play. So it gives you an advantage mm -hmm. in terms of knowing what they're going to do. But, you know, you don't know how you but... play. You don't know how you guys match up against each other. So it's really, it really comes down to that basis of what your team is most comfortable with. And it's a guessing game for us. But what we don't have to guess is that these players and teams are in the lobby. They're ready to go. They're looking hot and especially hot teams. Pin Trafford, one of the best teams, mm -hmm. historically speaking, in Three this league. Three out of four. Three out of four. That's a crazy stat <laughs> And if you don't know what that means, that was three out of four games that they were the kings of. And so they're looking to continue that dominance and possibly get a quadruple crown. It doesn't it doesn't roll off the tongue as well as the triple crown, but they're looking to try and write that here. And week one kickoff, it's so important with it only being six weeks, you have to make sure you hit your mark. You find your way to play and be aggressive and get off to that hot start. And we mentioned that uh, the bye week for Forest Hills coming in, getting to watch these teams play. They also have to Get watch back. this team. They have to watch this championship team that has proven how good they are. This team also has wins in Valorant, too. They are very good Ooh. at that game, not just Rock League. So not only are they talented at some lovely car soccer, they can click heads, too. So clearly, these guys got the gamer talents. I don't know if they have a lot of G Fuel stock to have a home. Not sure what's going on there. Maybe a little bit of cheat codes going on. But nonetheless, clearly... They are superior Clearly. to their fellow schools. Well, the big question is, you know, you wonder, do you, would clicking heads really translate to Rocket League? Because if you're playing with keyboard and mouse, uh, I mean, it'd be horrifying to watch someone flick the mouse for an actual flip reset. I don't know. I'd be entertained watching that, like, setup to watch the mouse and keyboard gameplay. I mean, hey, let's be honest, though. There are keyboard players that play Rocket League. There are few and far between, but they they are out there. And I... I I tip my hat to them. I do not know, understand how they have the thought process to go for flip resets and go in the air while pressing W A S D E right click, left click, shift space. But that, that's just beyond my capabilities. But they're good. They're good enough. There's a lot of main free stars that are out there. But it looks like we got the disconnected player that was in the lobby. We were rambling long enough to try to get him back in here. And I think that sets them up ready for this team. That we got the team colors on. It's very, very bright. Neon yellow and a little bit of a forest green. I think here, Foof, maybe a darker green. Definitely sets up the air for some bright colors here. Well, you know, it's a green team against a green team, so you have to be very careful when you're looking at it here. But you said it, the brighter colors on that left-hand side, rocking it in his Sandbrock PK and RI4. Pin Trafford, and then looking across the pitch, you have that roster of Stone Alley, Joler, and the main man, King Vicos, for none other than the Gateway Gators. We have cars starting to do a little bit of a dance. So, you know, maybe not yet. Maybe not yet. Oh, nope. The clock is ticking down. Um, it's uh... <laughs> Wait. All right. <laughs> Might want to go to an intermission here for a second, Foof, while we try to uh, clean up this mess here of the Rocket League players. The arena just doesn't want to start for us. So we're going to take a quick momentary break while we try to fix that.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back after a very short break. We had to fix a few technical difficulties, but after those were fixed, I am still Sizz. Foof is still Foof. We're still here. The lobby's here. The players are back in the lobby. They're getting on the field. Now, this time, I think, Foof, they're going to be ready. Yeah, we finally have six cars on the pitch. So that means we can put five minutes on the clock and possibly have five games to be played ahead of us here. But talking about these teams here, you have Gateway bringing in Stone Alley, Joler, and King of V-Coast, Penn Trafford, looking at PK, Rye, and... <laughs> That's the name of Ford 250, but that is not his name. That is Sand Rock. So quick transition here. The first 15 seconds of not only this game, but of the season as well. So shaking the jitters, getting back into this team play format and trying to find their footing in this early season. I like the pass attempt there to Ray. Already we see some sort of offense trying to develop here for Penn Trafford. It wasn't a lot, but it shows that how capable of an offense they have. And speaking of capable, Ryan, look at the shot here. Beats out one on a very quick goal to start off the season right. Well, just a beautiful touch there midfield. Rye with the finish, catching that defender a bit too slow behind it. So an early goal gives them a lead and Penn Trafford now by one. All oh, right, a little bit of a beat there on the kickoff, but it worked well for Stone. He's not able to beat PK though on the end there, but Joel looks to keep it in, but Rye's just lurking on the backboard, playing the hit well. King Vic trying to get a good touch there. Isn't able to get much. This is a dangerous situation for Stone, but he manages to get the clear away. Ryan PK both in the corner here. Not really sure who's trying to get the ball. PK will take over, gets a pass one, gets a pass another one. Dribbling moves coming out here. In the corner now, the pass off to the middle. This is a good chance, but Ryan's mm. not able to get the read. Can Ford get it? He's not able to get that one either. And PK slowly off as well. Looks like the nerves jitters a little bit there here for Pin Trapper. Three swings, three misses, but they are not letting off his offense yet. Now it's up to King here, getting all three cars here in that dark green on the same corner. So uh, not very spacious as they just kind of corral the ball out of their own half. And once again, it's back into the corner. Ryan looking for a teammate. He's got PK mid, but Ford trying to take this himself, banging it off of that sidebar and is denied not by a defender, but the woodwork. I noticed here too, a big factor in this game so far is the boost management. Oh my goodness, look at the ceiling shot there, saved away. And PK landing off of that corner boost, he just grabbed the other one. The boost management heavily in favor of Pin Trafford right now. How long can the defense last? That's a great double tip for PK, but still not funny. The neck and forward, no. Saved away by Joel, but still. The offense of Pin Trafford swarming gateway. They're running out of boost. This is dangerous too, but Pin Trafford backed up and finally a slight light at the end of the tunnel still in the half of gateway well it is just all offense all the time right now here for this pin trafford warrior squad as this is the first time it has really been broken out of the defensive third a pass midfield from joeler king can't get to it pk staying on top of it here but here is stone alley looking for a shot can't get it past that man diving towards the ball so the warriors put on defense for the first time in this series and are very quickly to get it out of their own half very comfortable on the counter attack here. That's a good chance, but saved away by King. Now here's another opportunity starting to develop here for Gateway. Past the midfield, past one, but unable to get it past PK. Ali all alone by himself on defense. Is able to clear to the midfield. Joler. Light touch the mid. Not able to get a lot from that though. And Rai will get it past one. Now a little bit of a 2v1 here for Stone. And still backing up because of the lack of boost. It has been all in favor of Pin Trafford so far. They don't look like they're letting off the gas pedal. This has been unsuccessful in finding clears. This is Joler's able to break out in the field. He has a boost now. I like the idea. He's got a near post play here, but the touch a bit unfavorable and the ball finds behind him. So now, once again, this Warrior squad leaning forward. The bright yellow team pushing up and trying to find something. That's a team bump. Nothing friendly about that fire as the ball stays on the defensive third. Maybe a good chance here for Stone to clear it away, but still, there's always a Pin Trafford player there for it. Looking for the double attach in the midfield of PK. That's a double commit there. Ryan can't finish. No, saved away by his own teammate. He was looking to get back for a boost, but maybe got a little bit too ambitious. And that's that's a costly mistake. No, costly as in they will not have a two-goal lead, but still defending a singular one as well. So just under 70 seconds left to play. Rye trying to pass it midfield, looking for a teammate. PK climbing the ladder, has a soft touch. He's putting a shot on. There's a lot of defense there, but three cars commit. No one ready to make the secondary touch. It's cleaned up beautifully here by Sandra. 
a lot of defense, maybe too much defense, as every player looked like they wanted to get that one. We saw a team bump, sent his teammate flying, he's like, oh no, gotta recover, but the third man also jumped. And unfortunately, this is not chaos. You do not have a fourth man, but that's a commanding, comfortable lead now for Pin Trafford with under a minute to go. Now it's up to Stone Ollie and company to find an answer. They're down a pair of goals here with 45 seconds left. King bumped by his teammate, Joler, pushing it across his net. He's going to try and go up the side wall here. I like the touch. It's slowly falling down, but Rye is there looking for a backward play, trying to find a double tap and will, but he cannot push it into the net. It's up to Sandrock, but no, it slips past. And now the Gators on the offensive, the offensive side for a little bit of an offensive spurt, but they cannot get anything going right now. Demos coming through. PK playing offense, playing defense, and playing cleanup crew. Only one shot to the name of Gateway Gators right now. Compared to the nine from Pin Shafford, can they get a 10th? Oh my goodness, look at the double 10 from Ryan, but it's just off the crossbar. We've seen that a lot through this whole game, but it doesn't matter if you're crossbarring that one and you have the commanding 2-0 lead, which turns into a game number one victory for the Warriors. It's just all offense all the time, and they did not have to sit back. That is 10 shots to the singular one of Gateway. So that's never favorable math, sis. And when you have to play defense for that long, you're either going to give up a goal or you're going to find a way out. And unfortunately, the Gators could not find that way out. And Penn Trafford, the Warriors, they score enough to stay over top. Uh, and the game of Rocket League, and a lot of games, truly, really, but Rocket League, I think, is the most unique sport when it comes to it. It does not matter how good you are, whether you're platinum ranked or you are the top 10 in the world. If you're on defense the entire game, you're going to get scored on. It is just a rule mm -hmm. of thumb. It is the rule of Rocket League. I've never seen it been broken. Will it be broken? At least I don't think so. Not in my history of Rocket League. Maybe in Rocket League number two. But clearly, the offense, the time of possession, shot opportunities, all of it was in favor of Penn Trafford. It was just playing catch-up for a gateway and they did not have a single answer there was a few times they had some good defensive stops but if you're not putting the ball into your opponent's net that defense isn't going to do much for you as shots equates goals right that's usually how it matters but all that really mattered in the end there was having a two goal lead in pin trafford doing enough there and so now it's up to this gateway team. They need to find clears. And the best way to do that, Sis, is by looking for outlet passes, be it to your teammates or be it clears into passes on your own side. A lot of people think in passing plays, they think in offense, the midfield passes, the aerial passes, but you have to do it on the defensive side to get the clears, to get that position and transition game going. And it's so important when you're on low boost for that amount of time, when you're struggling, you're getting pads, that you're looking for your teammates when they're cheating up for those boosts to try to get an outlet. Those little one-two pass plays can be so crucial just to get mm -hmm. your team on the kickstart, to get them offense, to get something going, at least enough time for them to get boost to get on the field. But that was only game number one. Gateway has plenty of time to resemble that, to make changes that they need to against this Pin Trafford team. Pin Trafford, meanwhile, they have to keep riding the wave Status of this heavy quo. offense. <laughs> just just keep doing what works right if it ain't broke don't fix this and so that is their entire operation right now game one goes their way they're looking to keep flying high right pushing touch he's got pk there but joler intercepting they're lurking like a safety but they cannot keep the pressure off for long that's all three yellow cars here in the offensive third a shot going off the touch there and sand able to clean it up the pass from one to two to three and that's how they equate to one goal this is not the start you want to see from Gateway. You mentioned three three yellow cards on offense there. When teams get so comfortable that they can send every single player past midfield, you're in trouble. You have got to find a way to stop that offense. And that is a very quick start for Pin Traver. 40 seconds into the game, and they're already starting off high. Well, trying to find one there is King, but he cannot find a touch. That Finnick just a bit unruly. PK, a pass up towards Sand, but he cannot find it. Dropping back down onto his Octane there. King having to make a big time touch there to keep it away from his net. Rye off the backboard, trying to find a teammate, but only finds just a mass of Gators writhing on that defensive third. Very dangerous here. Both players for Gateway cheated up to the corner boost. Not sure where the communication happened there. But then see King Vic in the corner there. Lurked up for the corner boost. Ali cheated up, trying to get the read. And on a basically open net, that is not the type of goal you want to give to Pin Trafford.
I think any type of goal is the type of goal you don't want to give a team, especially when they were able to score two in that last game, already having two here in the first minute. The ball falling back down into the corner. The Gators under siege once again. PK puts a touch out midfield, but not a lot coming of it as he was the lone player up. And now that's a miscue. It's going to be one, two. King sees his opportunity and takes it. Not, I need to take a second look here. What happened on the, oh, that's just a miss. For a 250 mm -hmm. over here is just a little bit too big. Maybe demote down to the 150 and you hit that. But clearly, this card just a little bit too wide. Not able to get that one. But, I mean, gateway, it's not really the type of goal that's flashy, spectacular. You scored on a miss. But that gets you on the scoreboard nonetheless. Maybe that's the momentum boost that they need to get some sort of offense going. Well, if PK has anything to say about it, he will not allow it. Pushing the pressure back again. Sandrock looking for a pass but cannot get there. Joler out to midfield and Rye. Waiting patiently under this one, dodging a demo as Joler is headhunting in front of his own net. The ball floating down the Warriors, trying to find a third a pass off the backboard here. PK wanting to set himself up. He's going to try and knock it down, but a save from Stone keeping it away at only a two-goal deficit. Lines of life for the defense. Maybe not, though. I cast a curse that into existence. They were holding on strong, but... A clear here, not able to get very far. PK off the sidewall. Look at the power, the bouncer, Joel, just not able to get to that one. Three goals now, and we have yet to even hit half time. Well, I mean, you said it, not even two minutes off the clock. So no, not even meaning that two, thir two and a half, oh my goodness, two and a half minute way point. Stone Alley slow here. King, a little bit overzealous as he had that side flip sent all the way. And so the ball stays on the Gators third. You know, I know Gators like to stay in their swamp, but they have to get on that offensive side at some point at some time in this series if they need to find a way. Stone Alley doing just that. Now he's got to pass out midfield. I like the idea. Joler trying to finish. He's got to touch on. That goes off the back of Stone Rock, who can't get there. Joler setting it up, cleaning it there, and making it 2-3. The Gators coming out of their swamp, indeed. They're looking for prey. That was a great save from Ford, and PK wasn't able to get that one. He's one of saving himself. He's angry. But still, though, it's just a tiny glimpse of offense, a two-second offensive play, and it turns into a goal for Gateway. Clearly, the pinch after defense, they're so confident in their offense that the rotations are lacking right now. And I think that the biggest play for the Gateway right now is just getting those counterattacks. Still so much time left to play in this game. It is a beautiful touch there as PK a little bit too overzealous. King in a 1v1 that touch, keeping it behind Sandrock. It's tied up. The Gators look down and out, but now you blink and you missed it. They've tied it up. Just like that. Time of possession, still heavily in favor of Penn Trafford. How long it takes to get a goal? Most definitely in the favor of Gateway now. That is another goal in less than 10 seconds when they get just one touch on the ball. Their offense is on fire, but maybe not their kickoff of PK. Not able to get that one just high off the crossbar. They've got to be able to hit those opportunities when they're given to you. Well, you need to find a mark in doing just that is the Gators. They were shut out all game one, and they will not be denied. King will not be denied. A hat trick for them, and now it's a 4-3 scoreline. Okay, okay, okay. First game, I said Pin Trafford wasn't letting go of the gas pedal. I did not expect the second game for Gateway just to suddenly suddenly raced to this lead four to three in a literal blink of an eye we've said that several times but that's truly what it has been a blink of an eye and this game this momentum this lead has completely changed pin trafford they need an answer they got to stop cross -firing. they got to stop hitting the post that's a good shot opportunity but no gateway is looking confident I mean, it was literally a wall of cars that built on top of each other. It's not supposed to work, sis, but they do it enough. The power of teamwork. Rai trying to find teamwork of his own. PK slow here is a beautiful cut from Sandrock. The ball rolling up high, but it is cleared all the way out to that middle third. PK putting it up high. It's up to Rai to find a touch, but he throws it into the corner instead. So now it's up to the Gators to build a defensive wall, to try and find another extender and defend this lead. Go off the corner, trying to get something going again for a confident two goal lead. Not able to get that one though, forward to the sidewall. Back to PK, high to the backboard, looking for the double touch off the corner. That's a good shot, but again, just not on the mark. The Gator defense is swarming. It's making the pinch average shots close tight and awkward and they've still yet to finish these that's dangerous though but cleared away by his own teammate still lots of panic going on for Ben Trafford that's a miss here looking shaky now and the ball is rolling dangerously in their half again 
No one up though for the Gators. They're just trying to play time. I like the pass. I like the touch, but I want to love it, Sizz. And right now, the Gators doing everything and anything just to pester this Warrior squad who looked to be all but in control after game one. It has been right back now to equal momentum. It is up to them to finish this one and equalize this series. Rye denied by two. It's up to PK. He's been that striker. He's got a double tap opportunity, but Joler just coming off the backboard to deny that. I'm ticking away now for Rai, trying to get it past Joel. High floating ball off of his backboard, Rai. Oh, sorry, PK, looking for the double, gets the double pass one. Stone just waiting in the corner. It's a, just so much space here given to that clear time ticking down. Solo play maybe for Rai, gets it past one, but he gets bumped off here. A chance for PK, but no, save it away. Dangerous ball floating in the midfield is straight from the back and forward, finish it. He's there! Does! Forward, hello, highlight play of the game so far. That one's a nice shot. Sandrock, are you kidding me? When it matters most, it looked like it was all but done. The Gators had turtled enough, but now with a singular second left, the Warriors strike equalizing this one, pushing it to OT. We got overtime. Okay, all right, all right. Both teams, they've got the juice on. They're both feeling it. The sweaty palms, they're nervous. They want this game so badly. Who's gonna take it? It's off to the side here. Sandrock trying to get it past one, does so. Awkward landing though, and King with the three goals trying to lead his team out back on offense, but it's cleared again by PK. Oh no, this is dangerous, that's Ooh. a dangerous touch, but Rai got his teammate. The communication right now for Pin Trafford just seems a little bit off. Now see, I'm, I am on the opposite end. It was a great call off there. It was very tight on the rotation, so not, you know, statistically sound to where you want to be, but they talked about it beautifully. No double commit there. They knew where each other were. So an unfortunate miscue there, but it was calm, beautifully called out and the cut worked in the best way possible of being a bad issue. So now it is up to the Warriors here, but King, he has been the striker. He's got a hat trick. He's trying to put the team on his back and carry them to their first win. PK and Rye on the backboard here, playing a little bit of slow ball here. Stone Ali gets it past him. PK looking to find another one here he's got three cars in front of him he's the lone man up playing solo offense off the backboard rice sees it and seals it he says solo don't mind if i do one touch looks for the bump fakes out the bump and still actually gets it at the end after that touch and Rai just so fast to that all three gator players hovering in that corner that's how dangerous he is in the air and it paid off well and a clutch comeback off of one second goal for pin trafford and they take it the win they do take game at number two. Now two in a row for them, but the big stat I need you to draw your eyes to, folks, is eight shots on the back of PK, totaling to a 13 on the offensive side for this Warriors team, where Gateway, they did step it up. They had seven. They answered the call. They had their own offensive opportunities, and they built a midfield trap. That is huge, but you cannot allow a player to shoot the ball eight times and expect to win. And that's clearly giving a talented player, arguably their mm -hmm. best player, way, way too much time in the ball. And we showed what he was capable of doing that to clutch out that victory at the end. Now this is where it gets dangerous. You are down 2-0 if you're gateway. You just had your game taken right out of your hands. You let it, you let it go. I think honestly, you let it go. And now is crunch time. Now is when you dig deep. You're down to it. It doesn't matter. You face down the barrel of the gun. You say, all right. This is when we're going to shine. Can they do it? Mm -hmm. King Vic, very capable of it. We saw those three goals last game. Can you do it again? Or can someone else step up for Gateway? Well, the big question is, is how does a team answer to adversity? And usually says, you don't get an answer to that in week one. But now you said it. Here you are, 0-2, looking at a 3-0 to start your season off. And there's only five more weeks after this. And so you need to start battling back. You need to try and get one of these games to swing your way. And how you do it is exactly how they did it last game. Find an answer. If it's midfield traps, if it's passing, if it's boost deals, if it's demos, find an answer. And it doesn't have to be an overall answer. It's your answer. When these teams play their own Rocket League and make the other team adapt, that's when they'll be at their best. And we saw how comfortable and how fluent that the offensive pinch effort was but they there was times where they were overcommitted too much trying to play so mm -hmm. much offense in the gateway half and gateway they took one counter they took a slight touch two seconds and they scored so i think if you're gateway you have to take advantage of those counter attacks again keep them on their their 
Toes. Sorry, I didn't think of the word there. <laughs> and you have got to keep going there because you can't let that, that defense come back at the last second to bite you. You have got to hunker down when you have that type of lead. Well, you know, you don't want to hunker down. You want to sit on your laurels. You want to find ways to keep the pressure. And they did a good job of doing that. It was just a Herculean effort by all three players. And the finish from Sandrock, who could able to stand up, I tell you, Sandrock, every time I think of saying their name, I think of Sandstone, and it's thrown me for a loop <laughs> every time, and I think that's why they do it, but Joler credited with a save, and now 30 seconds off the clock, and we haven't had a quick goal yet. That is, it's not following the script, so clearly this game is not scripted here for either team. Oh my goodness, look at the read from King Vic, but it's off of the post, Joel. Joel, oh, no. no. That's off the crossbar. Can the finish happen? No, what a save there from Rai. And Gateway pulling a little bit of a pin. Trafford is in quite a few open nets there. It's unfortunate there, but it was a very hotly contested area. A lot of cars in the same space and a lot of people trying to make their plays. And so it's about knowing your moment, understanding your mark and not rushing it. And so people playing in between here and there want to find their place so ride looking for a clear i like the idea he's on the sidewall there pass off the backboard but there is no room at all joler putting a touch on but instead it's going to be a trade of possession as pk pushing at the midfield as the boost manager seems a little bit more even here between these two teams first two games i feel like it was mainly for pin trafford's favor but i see Gateway lurking up a lot more for those boosts, trying to control the pitch of the field more often, challenging more at the midfield. They're trying to match this pace of this Pin Trafford team. So far, successful 0-0 zero, zero for both teams. They are playing neck and neck right now. And really, there's not been a lot of dangerous opportunities yet. So far, a few shots here that were a little bit awkward, but it's just how good that these teams are playing each other right now. It's a feat to watch. Well, beautiful pass there. Looking beautiful on the touch. He's trying to find a teammate midfield as that is a dangerous position for this Warrior squad to be. Now Ryan in 1v1. He caught him going for a boost. There's no one home. Ryan sets it up and is able to seal it. Uh, the legendary quote that you see most often in Rock League, boost over ball. That's going to bite you <laughs> in the back there, King. He thought he had time to get it and just Ryan leading out the play the entire time says, nah, <laughs> you got to stay on the ball, my friend unfortunate play there he thought that far post rotation would get there in time but it does not pk and company now rye climbing ladder here trying to find a touch joel doesn't turn towards it so the possession all on this warriors half and it's just keeping up right now but it's not threatening here on the gators as they only have one or two players up they don't have real control of this ball now they do though ali trying to find a pass joel needs to climb up quickly but he can't find the touch is sandrock finding a way to dissuade that one. Gonna be a high rolling ball here. See what Joe can do. He's gonna try to bait out the touch of right, but gets dusted to that one now. Very dangerous ball here up to the side while PK taking his time. Takes control, tries to get it past the alley, but a nice 50, right? Dives in, high arcing ball off the corner. Joe will bang it to the sidewall. Low boost, see what he can do here. Gets 50 by the miraculous Phoenix. Stone left all alone on defense that's dangerous but look at the control mm. look at the dedication there just to draw one of the players in get the 50 out but still though look at pk straight back on the ball he has been a menace this entire series now it is all up to the gators they need to find an equalizer here 100 ticks left over the ball it goes pk into the corner joler looking for a touch off the backboard and gets it he's got no one though wearing a familiar jersey color in the midfield so it stands at midfield and it's now up to the warriors sandrock putting a threatening touch on but he's not got a lot to it pk he's been the guy to try and hold that flag running up forward but now he's standing back as a reliable third to control the ball keep it away from his net and force this gator squad to overcommit. dangerous ball still here ali trying to get the clear can he get the double no right off the sidewall cannot get it past vic though a little bit of a lull here in the action as the ball is still hovering around the midfield high rolling ball pk Gets beat out by Joel. Joel still staying on, trying to get the bump. Does get the bump. bump. This is dangerous, but still, though, everyone for Gateway just so far back. And that's going to be dangerous. What a save, though, from Ali off of the air dribble from PK. Another shot. shot. Nice shot. Unable to get the save there, Joel. And look at the pressure. Look at the shot. That's a great save, but you just cannot keep saving every single shot that's coming at you. 
Saved and clears are not the same thing, unfortunately. And so with that ball being saved on that, but not cleared out of the defensive third means it's a quick goal. And so now Rai and the Warriors in a familiar spot up to PK into the corner again. It is up to this duo to find more, but just slow, steady play. Ball control will get the deal done. Sandrock is there and finding a third. And Rock, look at him, straight off the corner, beats out two players, beats the third off of the pure speed. Both players there for Gateway cheating up in the corner. The third man wasn't prepared to have a ball come in right in his face. And now 3-0, 32 seconds to go. You have got a lot of working to do if you want this comeback. Well, you just have to find one, but that's not how you do it, is Rye got the old 9-iron out, saw a spot, chipped it up, and watches it go the entire length of the field. Yeah, when I, when I said you need one, not in your own net, you need one in their net, does not look like that's going to happen for this game. And I'm pretty sure, pretty confident in this prediction here. Don't quote me on it, but I think that just might be the nail in the coffin. Well, it is uh, a little bit do or die right now for week one. As PK and company, the Warriors out to their winning ways and looking to stay on that ship. That's a dangerous ball here, Joel. Bumped out. That's Ali bumped by a teammate. Pandemonium right now as bumper cars have been set in motion. Ali can't get there. King playing back. 3-2-1. PK pushing it down. It bounces over. The ball falling down as a formality. At this point, Joeler able to just threaten that enough. And I think that was an own goal to finish it. I think that was a little bit of a sympathy, maybe even a kind of a, yeah, we just won. I'll put it in for you, sympathy goal. You know, respect, honestly, respect for putting oh, it in for that. getting big. But yeah, four to one off of the last second goal, pretty heavily in favor of Pin Tracker at the, uh, the last game there. But still a good series for Gateway. I wouldn't look at it from a 3-0 point of view. It was it was pretty tight throughout. Well, the big thing here is, again, draw your eyes to that shot column. It's starting to close more and more. And this time, though, it is a lot closer because Pin Trafford scored on 50% of their shots. And then all the others were saved. And so when they find the back of the net that successfully that many times, you're not going to have that many opportunities because you're just scoring. And I think throughout that whole entire series, even though there was a lot of good opportunities, a lot of chances for Gateway, some nice mm -hmm. shots we saw, still time of possession and offensive, I think, power and capability still definitely tips in favor of Penn Trafford. They have got it going in terms of just their ball chasing. That's, that really comes down to is they always have a person on the ball. They're always looking for their teammates. When you think you get it past one, there's two more players there to clean up. But nonetheless dominating performance to start out the spring season for Penn Trafford in a commanding, much well-earned 3-0 victory. Now, says I have a question. Shoot. Should we call it the Golden Tree Golden Retriever Award if you're chasing the ball the most? <laughs> I mean, any I would, puppy lovers I, out there in chat <laughs> watching, I, 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 I have like, to agree. <laughs> the first one that came to mind was Bloodhound. I'm like, no, nah, that doesn't sound as cool, but Golden Retriever Award, are you kidding me? I would love to have a trophy with a dog chasing a rocket car. <laughs> well, but during this is... intermission, I think we're going to be looking for food to get him a Golden Retriever. I think while we look at that, though, while we try to find him his dream puppy, we're going to get this next match set up. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back very quickly.
join forces. Hello and welcome back, all of you beautiful people out there. I am still Sizz, and joining the likes of me again is Foof. We had a fantastic, wonderful, offensive-filled yeah. series number one and series number two. Hopefully, we'll keep that same memo between the uh, Somerset. I think that's an eagle, a hawk. Wow, I should really remember. Uh, so, <laughs> I, was, I was looking at that one too, and I was hoping you'd know more than I did. All right, all right. Golden <laughs> Eagles, Somerset Golden Eagles versus Berlin Brothers Valley which are the Mountaineers. Thank goodness that Oki is here to save my Thank life. Thank you, production. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any, any thoughts on this one? Not much presence here. I know, historically speaking, Mitch is here early that Somerset generally does come out with a W here, but uh, mm -hmm. give, me, give me your thoughts, predictions for this. Well, here's the big thing. When you talk of playing as an age group instead of more of a skill group, there's going to be a wide discrepancy of identity of players, of teams, and ideas. And so when you don't, I want to say like you don't diversify by that 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 skill group. There's going to be a lot of different players, and so some people are going to be mechanical gods. Some people are going to be passer players. Some of you are going to be shooters. Some people are demo players, and some teams are going to be built around the identity of being a team. And so, with it being a six week season, you're going to see a lot of that. And so, I'm excited to see what both of these teams bring to the table. And it's about playing. And I said it before, and I said it last series your game of Rocket League. And so, I want to see what is Somerset's game of Rocket League. What is Berlin Brothers Valley's Rocket League, and we'll see that here. On the side of Somerset, we have Sniper, Ethan, and K-Bone, Eromi, Explosion, and Caden on the side of Berlin. And for both these teams, the only name that I'm familiar with that I recognize, again, Ethan coming in for Somerset and Explosion coming in for Berlin Brothers Valley. Both both players were the notable, pretty much MVPs of their teams last time around, last season I watched them play, but new season, new players, new faces, new talent, anything's capable. Game's already started though, the ball's lurking around the Berlin half. 
Well, a slow play there here. And again, it is week one. It is series one for these teams. And they're trying to step out on that front foot. Caden putting it high here as they're going to probably want that one back. Is that near post? Just a bit too far close to the wide post. It was wide open. Bone looking for a touch here. Explosion is there. Sniper all the way back. Not willing to overcommit here and playing safe and smart as the feeling out process continues. Sniper there looking for a near post, but he is delayed to that one. That one rolled to him a bit too quick, and so it still stays at the 0 0 score line. Very slow start, like mission this fill out period between these two teams. That's a great demo in the backfield there from Bone just to clean up some of this pressure here. Ethan, lots of time in the ball looking to do it all himself, looking for the air carry. Can he get oh. past the last defender? And it lasts like a touch there from Kaden. It looked like it was going over. And on the counter again, Berlin going. Some offense for both teams, but. Not too many opportunities. This is a good chance here for Ethan. 1v1. Oh, 3v1. Oh, look at the flick, but it's not going to be high enough. Didn't elect to use his teammates there when he had one on either side. That was an interesting play there, and you said it. We called it. It was a 3v1 and electing to go for a solo play there. Ethan, it's all in front of you. We just have to put it in. He corrals it. He sees it up and just walks it in. And so a bit of a miscue there, and it is up to Ethan. And now Summer sets up one. I believe a Roman there a little bit awkward in the net and expected a quick power shot. Ethan backflipping. It looked like a backflip, but he read the play the entire way. was able to sneak it in on that far post. And Somerset starting off the scoring here early on. But Berlin looks to get a counter. Axe was like he was going to land on that ball. But Caden is there for the cleanup. High rolling balls to the corner. Looking for the bump. Gets it past Sniper. But Ethan there for the crowd. Never mind. Ethan to miss. And Bone will have to make the save. Aromi is going to get bumped out, though. And... What was the first good opportunity for Berlin to get saved away? Oh, they've had a couple of solid opportunities. The first shot they had saved away. Ethan coming off oh the sidewall, scooping it up, taking it the whole way. Bit of a foot down on the accelerator there. Well, I mentioned that Ethan was the name I was looking out for, and he's been proving it. <laughs> he's got the first two goals on a completely clean, gorgeous air dribble off of the sidewall. Doing it all himself. He says, yeah, you know, I had teammates, but... Let me just be on the highlight reel. Absolutely. And now Caden with a mystery there, and there is that man again, Ethan, in front of the net, bicycling in here, but could not control it. Sniper into the corner here. Ethan with a bit of a back pass, but all he finds is Axplosion's car, and that's going to be set up for a goal. So 10 seconds above the midway point, it's 1-2. Ethan trying to back pass the teammate, but wasn't quite ready for it. Bone elected not to challenge for it, and Axe sniping that to the right post. Not quite the mistake you want to make on defense, but it does get Berlin on the scoreboard. And who else for Berlin but Explosion? Talking about the two old heads, the two remaining names that you know both have the scores right now. So maybe we can see these, you know, literal unknowns if they can step up. If maybe Caden or Romy or Cavebone or Sniper can stand up. As that demo comes through, Ethan trying to find a redirect. Sniper playing cleanup. It's three to one. Well, well, well. Bone down to Ethan. Ethan, a quick shot was off the post, but Sniper there for the cleanup. He says, you know, I'm, I'm happy you missed that so I can get on the scoreboard. Now it's three to one, just seven seconds past halftime. And it looks like it's pretty heavily in favor of Somerset in terms of offense. We've seen some good shots created for Berlin, but time of possession, the killer here, as Ethan has just been a menace, constantly chasing, going after every ball. They have got to find a way to shut him down. Oh, Ethan just living on the backboard and sets up is that one for K-Bone. He can't find it, though, but that 50 from Sniper keeping it on this blue third. The ball coming through. Ethan seeing through the smoke and mirrors. It's four to one. Ethan already a hat trick, and we have two minutes and one seconds left. Chill, man. It's OK. We know you want to keep scoring, but you got to let your teammates get on the action at some point. But my goodness, if he, if he keeps going at this rate, he's going to have five, six goals at the end of this. We might see a thousand point score line. Uh, dropping a K, but right now that all that matters is they're trying to get win number one. Ethan can't catch up to this one off the backboard. A pass opportunity there. Caden pushing it out, and now it's up to Aromi. Explosion gets it on top, but Ethan with a very quick and timely steal. I like the pass. Can Ethan finish a soft touch? Near post keeps it there. That's goal number four. Well, who it is again. Look at the pass here from Cabo and the synergy with Ethan. Ethan getting the read off the backboard. And it is just clockwork right now for Somerset. Ethan is making the Berlin defense run around, spin out in circles. And it shows no signs of letting off the gas pedal. Minute 39 to go. 
And Kavo looking for the double tap of the backboard. Can he get the read? No, saved away by Ethan. Not quite sure if I want to take that one. Well, it's just about trying to find it. And so right now, Sniper finding his moment there as that opportunity's turned away by that standall defense. Ethan finishing it, and who else but this golden octane? Romy on the defense gets the save pass one, but K-Bone the pass to Ethan, and Ethan is just up so quickly. The pass off the backboard. He's got the reads down point. He's looking comfortable. He's looking clean. He's confident. And it's just game number one. He is on a rampage. No, a rampage and lighting it up right now. That ball's back in front and guess who? Goal number six and taking a trip down to South America. We got a Brazil on the scoreboard. Okay, all right, Ethan. Well, I, I said a thousand points at the end of the game. I didn't mean, you know, when there's a minute left. He's not there yet, but it, it's got to take one more goal and he's going to be there. Meanwhile, for Berlin, I'd like to see some more goals in your opponent's net right now. And do not give the ball to Ethan. Ethan not able to get that shot on in a rare miss. Rare miss as Ethan tries to find a pass midfield. I like the control here and I love these touches. Caden a bit too excited there. Explosion over one. It's a 1v2 with Xbone. K-Bone, excuse me, standing tall. Ethan and K-Bone going for it. Double attack, but they cannot finish it now. The blue team rolling out as a squad. The blue angels almost, but they cannot sneak past this gold team. Ethan off the backboard trying to find a teammate, but K-Bone cannot find the touch. Sniper's looking at Ethan. I'm pretty sure Ethan has been on the backboard more than anywhere else so far. At least at least been in the Berlin half anywhere else this entire series. And you see him camping next to the corner boost. He's just waiting He's on the back stroke. And the block just comes to him. He's not <laughs> even trying to hit it. I, I don't know what's happening here. Maybe Ax can get the counter, but ball just rolling around here. And Romy, no boost, not able to get a powerful touch. Time ticking down. Ethan probably looking to get one more for the road. And Berlin is just like, Please, let's go to the next game. Well, they're just trying to find something here. Romy, the last man back, 3-2-1. The ball back up in the air. Kavon playing high, trying to find a dish. And Ethan does not have the boost, but you know he wanted to try and secure that one as it's 8-1 to one here in game one. Bowen, I, I came on rather. I thought he was going to pass Ethan just to give it for the road, but I, I like the respect of him taking his own goal. And that was a pretty heavily heavily dominated performance there by Somerset with the 10 mind you look at look at that again 10 shots but that's just outrageous that's more than some teams shooting an entire best of five if it goes only to three games and so 15 shots on the scoreboard here for the Golden Eagles and the poor Mountaineers they are being held in their cabin hostage right now as they were only able to find a pair and scoring on only one of those much to take from this game for Berlin other than Axe was one for one. So I, you, your top player that I mentioned was 100% on his goal scoring. So that is that's pretty positive good. that you can say for that game. Yeah, I mean, if you're taking one shot and you're making it, clearly you've got the offense going. Not much else really to give for them there except maybe find a way to shut down Ethan because it was just the Ethan show. It was the Somerset Ethans at that point. But no, definitely going into <laughs> this on, next no. game. Definitely going into this next game. You want to find a way to shut him down and get some offense going. Look for those clears because there's a few chances they mm -hmm. had it. They just were so low on boost or so panicky that they're like, oh my gosh, finally, finally a chance on offense. And then maybe just rush it too much. So maybe going into the second game, they can get something going. Well, the big thing you talk about is Ethan living on the backboard. And in a way, it's if you're allowed that space to do it, it means it's up to a K-Bone and Sniper to stay at that midfield and find passes to him. And so you wonder if maybe... The Mountaineer squad can find answers here. That's a missed clear. That's an open net, but Ethan sending it to row 17 instead. Ethan on the backboard still trying to pass his teammate on the back pass. That's a good chance there for Romy, but couldn't get a lot of height on it. And Axe push it on. So maybe Wait. an ogle here from Sniper, but no, Ethan finally has hibernated and found his way back to his home defense. But I don't I don't think he's gonna stay there Did very he hibernate? long. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> Well, I know that the uh, the great the, the really big winged birds that fly over the ocean can sleep well for Albatross. That's the name. But anyway, all that matters is Ethan's looking for a pass midfield. K-Bone cleans it up. It's a one goal lead. 39 seconds in. I, I think at this point, from what I can tell, it's it's K-Bone and Ethan on the offense, whether it's Ethan passing to K-Bone or K-Bone passing to Ethan. And Sniper's just showing the backfield. I've been looking at his uh, 
point of view for a while now, and he's just filling it up. He's going back to the defense, third man rotation, just vibing, letting his teammates work. And it is the play right now. That's a great chance off the kickoff. And Ethan with a pre jump. No fear, absolutely no fear from him so far. Well, explosion a bit underneath here. Kbone looking for a touch. He's going to put it on. Aromi there standing tall and making a pair of saves. Explosion now in a 1v1 at midfield, but cannot get it over Sniper. Caden trying to clear it out and gets credited for the save. The ball still in a dangerous spot. Ethan just parking it, waiting for these plays, getting past another one here. Trying to find some control, driving in a circle. And the ball pushes all the way back out into the corner. Aromi denied by Sniper. Sniper off the backboard here, but cannot catch up to it. Explosion handing it off to Ethan. Ethan off the ceiling. Kbone's behind him off the ceiling as well. They're trying to get a freestyle play, but Ethan is just going for flip reset after flip reset. And there's Sniper in the backfield playing his permanent goalie here. Looking to clear it down to Kbone. And Axel is a nice read for the pinch. That's going to be dangerous floating in front of the net, but Ethan is there to corral that one in. Kbone looks to the pinch to send it downfield to none other than Ethan again. Well, past midfield, Sniper is there. He's finding in here post shot. Aromi going a bit too far. And Xbone signing his name on the PowerPoint at the last moment. I for sure thought this was Sniper's goal. And Kevo just randomly led it there. He's like, oh, okay, free ball rolling at me. I'll happily take that goal to pad my stats. But it's, uh, so far from this series, it looks like Berlin Brothers Valley, a little bit outclassed, outmatched here. They are playing more on the let's sit in the defensive side and hope to get a save against this crack player, but maybe not. Aromi getting on the scoreboard here for Berlin Brothers Valley. That's a good start. That's something they need. And this is why you don't double fake on kickoffs because it leaves your last man in such an awkward spot if he can't find a good touch. The ball goes straight up. There's now two players on the offensive end and the Mountaineers biting into this one, cutting the lead in half with three minutes left to play. A little bit of an appetizer here for Berlin Brothers Valley. They haven't got the main course yet, but they are getting there here off the sidewall. It's dangerous, but Cable unable to get that shot on target. Aromi steals a boost from Ethan, so we're going to see Ethan have to go play defense at least for a few moments. Takes the ball off of his back wall. Looking for the musty flick, gets control, not able to get it very high though, and it's going to ping off to the side. Axel is there for the shot, but Sniper in his perma goal of defense able to get that one. Cable and awkward here, has to make the save, it does so. Berlin getting a little bit of offensive opportunities here, a few shots on net. Still saving away, but looking good. Touch here being put on Sniper with a save. Caden Explosions, the last man's back, but now this ball just being sent all the way there in. It's just a trade of possessions, almost a tennis volley. As Axel Explosion past one, Sniper putting it on the side. We'll hear a demo from Ethan's going to slow this offensive down. Now he's stealing a ball. It's up to K-Bone, who passes it back to him. Golden Eagles looking for an opportunity, trying to find a third. The pass to K-Bone. Ethan going for a doomsie and finds a way to make it work. I think that was a little bit of an accidental own goal, but regardless, that was still an incredible angle. A nice shot from Ethan, and yeah, it definitely went in off of the Berlin player, but still, that's not a lot you could do against that shot. Beautiful Tim, beautiful shot, almost fully executed, but it goes in nonetheless. Well, I like the control here from the Golden Eagles as they continue to find their way. The only thing I'd ask them to do is start to cleaning up these passes. I like these ideas of trying to get more mechanically solid and more sound with your plays, but don't overreach. Make sure you put away the competition, whereas the Mountaineers, they are finding ways to bite back. They're putting pressure on. They're just a bit too far out and spaced, and they need to find ways to contest as that is just a picture perfect air dribble and Ethan finishes. And my heart goes out to Berlin. Look at this. Look at the control. Look at the carry down to Ethan. And Berlin is just hoping like, all right, he's going to get out of there eventually. Right, right, right. And the ball is selling over your head into your net. A very quick denial of anything that was going for the Mountaineers. That air dribble to pass. K-Bone now looking to try and set something up like night at again. Aromi. Denied by Sniper, an interesting push there. Ethan just like just all the way living on this blue half. I mean, he is a yellow card just deciding the boost is his, the ball is his, maybe the goal is his as K-Bone signs off on a double tap. Put that one in the highlight reel. K-Bone to the backboard, gets the double touch, minus one point for the bounce, but still very, very clean. Amazing performance control execution is capo in this game with all the highlight plays so far.
doing what he needs to do. Ethan, a pair of goals. Kayvon, three for four on shooting. And the Mountaineers, they have not been held shotless, as that is a dangerous spot to be. Aromi, beautiful there, but Iconic and Axel Explosion, they need to find something to hold on to. It's going to be a rough series no matter what, but they want to try and find a couple goals here to get the momentum back on their side. Pass off the backboard here. Aromi can't get to it. Axel Explosion retreating the entire length of the field, and now it's up to Ethan. A near post shot, he's putting it on and sticks it through a hat trick for them. Ethan, Ethan, Ethan. Didn't let us talk about K-Bone for very long, but I'm still going to talk about him because the pass, the oh, absolute pass. launch from the K-Bone to Ethan. It's always one of them. One of those two is just always on the scoreboard with Sniper playing that hard third man. I wonder if he's been watching any Gibbs uh, OG videos lately. Not sure, but oh, look at the fake kickoff. Not going to get much there. The freestyle Tim cut just a little bit short. Oh, Sniper trying to find Ethan on the backboard there. And it was just, if you saw him in the moment, it was just looking at a... A fly waiting to get its moment on the wall. And there he is again, a near post play looking for K-Bone. K-Bone to finish the 1-2-1, one, one, and it's 7-1 again. Deadly duo strikes yet again. Ethan on the backboard. Look at the pass down to K-Bone. Berlin just not able to get around to that one. And anyone that just looked at this series from a glance, you know, you have, you have to understand from this point of view that Somerset is extremely high range players compared to Berlin. Berlin, they're rocking the diamond tournament winner, the gold tournament winner. Somerset over here rocking GC tournament winner, Donk Master. So two of these players, grand champion and above. There's not a lot you can do when you're a gold coming in, when you're a diamond coming in. So re respect and tipping my hat to Berlin for playing their hearts out, playing like they are, still getting chances. They're, they're fighting for their lives. They're coming up short, but you got to give them the credit for at least trying. Well, they're trying to find another one. Sniper doesn't have the momentum to catch up to it. Somerset takes their second by a score of seven to one. K-Bone, four for five. Can't get much better than that. I would have liked to see the 100%, but 818 points, 727 from Ethan. Both had three goals and above. And we saw, look at Aromi, four saves. Still playing that defense after so many shots coming on. Seven goals, you still got four saves out of it. Mm -hmm. There's, They're fighting for every bit. And I think, I think the big play that comes down to this is the small victories that you get from this. It's the small things you can use to build up your gameplay. To you're playing against a solid team, a better team. You know that they're better. It's learning how to play against these teams that is going to raise your skill level, increase your skill level by that much as you go on and keep playing this game. So the big answer that you need to there's no there's no fix all, there's no cure all, there's no duct tape or a, a certain tape that a man would slap on the side of a leaking boat and say it fixes it that you can do to fix this issue. But one of the things you can do right now is you want to close out on a lot of the space that you're giving them because they use it so well. They pass it well, they shoot well, they go for air dribbles, they go for high touches. And so it's kind of up to Berlin to find that too much of over committing for 50s because you'll never know how much is too much until you finally step up and find it. So I want to see maybe a couple really aggressive challenges here, even if they don't go well, because Rocket League is a game of trying and finding your way. And so sometimes you have to be too aggressive. This is a card game. If you're Berlin, you, you just got to go all hands on deck at this point. You got to go all or nothing. Put all the chips out there. If you overcommit, you get scored on. No big deal. If you go for a crazy pass and it doesn't go in, no big deal. You got to take those risks sometimes and just see what can happen. You know, like you mentioned, Rock League, it's a crazy unique game that you have to take those shots. And speaking of shots, that's a pass actually down to Caden. Looking for their teammates there. That's a great shot though from Ethan. But still, you know, Berlin, that's what you need. Those are the offensive opportunities you have to learn to take and try to go for. Yeah, you can see it starting to formulate there, the one to two, but Ethan with the finish, able to get it in that transitional shot. He's been looking for those all series and finds one here only 23 seconds in. Somerset still doing that fake kickoff. It's actually gonna go over to Ethan off of the 50 and Ethan looking Late. for the double touch. Isn't able to get it, but one touch is all he needs. And look at that, the fake kickoff actually worked that delayed 50 straight over to Ethan, picture perfect. Yep, Caden seeing it just a hair behind it as now he's not able to get up to that near post in time. And Ethan scoring another one here. Somerset up by two. Max looking to control, but it bounces really hard off his car. That's a dangerous ball, Ooh. but unable to make contact there off of the pass attempt. Now a Romy. Key player so far for Berlin Shot gets on. 50 by Sniper. Not even really a 50, just practically winning that one. And this is running away a little bit from Berlin. 
You know, it's just all offense all the time, and now they're finding their marks even more. Three to nothing now, and only 42 seconds off of this scoreboard. Berlin needs to start finding a way and get back into this match. It's a good chance there. Close bomb attempt there from Axe on Ethan. Now K Bone on the counter. Gets two touches. Can't get the third one, though. Save. Saved away by Aromi. The key player that's been on defense the most for Berlin. Getting the most saves is a good chance for Axe. He's going to get it past it. K Bone. A little bit of assistance, but either way, it was going in from both of them. It was just who could get to it first. And so here's a small thing that you want to say. He does a great job of boost control and then picking it up, but he lets off the boost a hair early and so doesn't get to Supersonic at that opportune moment. And so that puts him behind the ball and behind that touch. Unfortunately, no save coming through. And so it's a 1-0 here or a one goal here for this Berlin team as they're trying to find an answer. K-Bone a bit too high. Ethan just driving on the backboard, enjoying his time. Aromi over one, putting some offense on in a 2v2 setting here as they try to find a way to bite into this lead. I've been wondering when the uh, tire marks are going to come out on the backboard for how much Ethan has been back there. Still out there, but I'm, I'm holding out that it's going to pop up there eventually. He's going to implant his tires at some point. Match. <laughs> here off the backboard, this is a good chance, but no one up for Berlin. Cabo with a pre jump beats out two players, either for the backboard, looking for the flashy redirect. Is he gonna get on. it? Yes, he will. Picture perfect, Ethan mechanics. Uh, he's been doing it all series. I mean, he's just waiting on the backboard the entire time. This one is up to him. He saves the flip and then touches it with the tire. Those are what you call an insane angle, folks, and that was incredibly insane, and now it's 4 1. Uh, a lot of people would shrug at that like oh it was open that's still a really hard angle like you mentioned like, people struggle to hit that at free play so like credits to hitting that ethan has been hitting every single attempt basically he's been going for speaking of that one unable to get that 50 into the net bone back pass the sniper sniper looking for the backward hit ethan the team three passing play a little bit off but trying to get the vision on each other for these passing plays now this is a good chance for Axe, trying to get anything going, but no boost his name, and it's actually going to fake out one, but K-Bone will die for the save. Well, there's now no one in net and no one on the ball. The ball was given a moment of respite there as it sets now at midfield. Explosion pushes off the wall, but can't find the clear. K-Bone looking for a touch to Ethan. Ethan can't get the redirect, and Aromi credited with another save. Their fourth of this match, a demo coming through. Caden now. Having to play in front of his own net, getting a touch there. K-Bone looking for one. He's going to try and find it down low and does off the dish from Sniper. I don't think the, the defense there for Berlin was expecting K-Bone to get this angle off the shot. Beats out Axe. Axe just a little bit of a misflip. And both players for Berlin on the defensive half were a little bit late on the rotation. 5-1 to one now. We see actually Sniper on the, on the scoreboard here. One goal. We've been seeing him on defense majority of the time. The fake kickoff, though... You can't fake the entire time because there's no one back in the net. At what point does it become just not a fake anymore because they stopped doing it? And there is no one in net trying to just, uh, I, I can't really say explain it in the best way, but that's not the smartest thing to do. 222 left on the scoreboard. They're up by three. I mean, the general idea when you decide to fake kickoff in three is you want someone back there, regardless if you're going for a demo off the kickoff, you want someone to be able to hit an outlet, and both the players look for corner boost, so maybe a little bit overconfident in the fake, but it does give Berlin on the board. 5-2, two, two, zero, 7 on the clock. Aromi flicks it past wide. That's a good chance, but it's going to be wide, and K-Bone is there for the cleanup. He's trying to stay on top of here, but doesn't use any of the boosts. Instead, just letting oh. this team get the ball. Axle Explosion blasts another one here, inviting it down to only two. Okay, okay. Axe has been a little bit quiet this series, but that's what I like to see. The flick drawing out the opponent gets the high touch passes. Still two goals down, but you have three goals. That's more than you've had so far in the last two games combined. So clearly, you're getting some bits of offense going, even if it's off of the lack of defense by the Somerset, you still take the small victories. Ethan winning past two, but can't win past the third. A demo coming through, and that's on that player, Ethan. Caden, waiting for the touch here, Romy, trying to find it here, X, just doing enough to dissuade it. A demo coming through once again, K-Bone, waiting for one here as they try to put this one away. A minute 30 left on the clock, 90 seconds here, and Ethan just living on the backboard in the distance back there. Ethan is confident and waiting patiently. I do not have that level of patience. He needs to teach me how to have that. And he's still going back to the backboard. He cheated up. He's like, I might play defense for a few moments, but nah, we're going to go to the backboard. And Bone 
Get to clear down Ethan. Ethan, oh my goodness, no shot. You hit that one. That was a great attempt, though. A little bit of a spoiler hit on that one. Still, though, the ball crawling around in the Berlin's half. Romy staying on it, low boost, and gets demoed by Sniper. Able to lift it, Ethan on the backboard. This is a very hard angle, Ethan. Yeah, I can't really shake my hand on that one. That's, that's really hard. About 47 seconds left. Caden putting it on. Kayvon able to get back to that one in time as there's not enough beans on that shot. And the Golden Eagles still firmly in control. Up by two. Sniper puts another one on the demo. Clears the way. And that is a save by Axel's Explosion, Making a demo and keeping it only a two-goal deficit. On the counter, maybe Axel gets something going. But Caden also dived that ball. Now Romy gets past one. Not able to get the second one as I've seen Berlin basically on zero boost throughout this game. We just see Ethan driving around in the backfield, taking all of their boost. They have zero boost their name throughout this series. Maybe one more for Ethan for the road off of the ceiling, but not able to get that one barred down. And X K Bone will be there for the follow up. Yep, K Bone able to follow it up though off of the dish and down. It goes off the crossbar and out. A Romeo and company unable to do anything here at six to three. Three seconds left on the clock. Maybe Berlin gets one more for the road. Ethan maybe gets a redirect off the kickoff. It's probably going to be a fake. Oh, actually, Berlin faking it gets the save points here for Romy. Actually, that did not register as a save. I am so sorry, Romy. Double commit here from Somerset. The ball is going to hit the ground. K Bone clears it away. And Somerset and crew with a commanding 3 0 for the second time today. Back-to-back 3-0s with this one in a much different fashion. Another 13-shot game, 15 in the first. I don't remember the number of the second, but 13 in this one as well. I mean, that is just an insane amount of shots, an insane amount of pressure. Ethan, K-Bone, and Sniper, that combination, kind of putting a memo out to the rest of these teams to let them know that they are on the map and they are ready to play. I, I really like to see later this season. I'd love to see a Somerset versus K. I think that would just be that would be lights out in terms of offense defense. I'm not so sure, but clearly Ethan and crew got the offense going down <laughs> Berlin. You got to keep your heads up after that one. You were heavily outranked in terms of just skill range for this match. So you tried your hearts out. You had three goals this last game. You did everything that you could. You played the entire series plus respect for you. But Somerset ultimately comes out the victor. Standing tall there, the Golden Eagles make week one theirs by a sweep and doing it in dramatic fashion. So stay where you are. We have more Rocket League coming up. We're going to be taking a short break and Sis and I will be back in a bit.
I'm Money Long. Check out my new song, Hours and Hours, on YouTube Music's The Hit List playlist.
Welcome back, Frids, to the third and final matchup of today's stream. We've had two three O's. Hoping to see if this series will be any different. I am Sizz, still Sizz, and joining alongside me is the legendary man, Foof, again. Foof, we've got an interesting matchup, a very interesting name that you mentioned on. Tell us who we got playing. Well, we've got a fun combination here of the Golden Tigers of Holidaysburg and then the Huskies out of Bishop Carroll. So, you know, these teams both bring it in. It's week one. We've, you know, you have some background on them. I am completely new. So as some Twitch viewers maybe as well, we are wondering what these teams are bringing together. And so as always, I'm biased when I see blue and gold on the pitch. I'm always happy. But in the blue today, you'll have Bishop Carroll. And in that white or gold, you have the T Golden Tigers of Holidaysburg. And Bishop Carroll is a team that I watched a lot last season. I believe the only returning player that I'm aware of uh, on the field that will be playing today, at least, is Tot. Tot, very, okay. very solid player. Uh, for Hollisburg, I have yet to see them play. Um, not the great really unknown. Sure. The great unknown. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, you know, <laughs> the, 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 they, got, they bring this whole air of mystery about them, and that could be fantastic for them as a team because we have no idea what they're doing if we don't know i'm sure their opponent doesn't know either so very interesting to see how this will go but all the players on the field they're ready to go in the classic blue versus gold well you have brian black donald duck roar and what we assume is nathan in the gold boy race and italian schema untucked for bishop care on the hus for the huskies so early offense here denied by nathan and so again it's about getting off to that first real start in a season and which team can come out of the gates in kind of the best footing first game can be so crucial to how your team will play even even for the I first mean, two games of the season speaking of i mean Donald duck off of the pass you make me eat my words look at that look at the outlet the golden tigers poised and ready to strike pouncing at that one donald can't go near post but the third is ready is that's a one to two to three to set it up and 30 seconds in we have a highlight goal talking about the air of mystery that's a way to open up i don't i don't know if you can make the fireworks any brighter any cooler than that and still the offense hard to hear trying to keep this ball high Ryan looking to get a pass, but Todd is there for the cleanup. Can he get another one? Nathan will clear it all the way down to the corner again here. Donald waiting. Can he get that one on target? It is, but it's saved away by Boy Racing. And Todd looking to do it all himself. Maybe the solo carry into the net, but it's cleared away by Nathan. Both teams looking to get some fast counterattacks going here. Searching, looking, prodding, trying to find a little bit of a way as that ball bounces off the side where Donald is there trying to get a 50. It's now up to Brian who pushes it all the way into the corner. Tot with an answer, looking for the boost, but there is none there to be had. Back toward play denied by Italian for now. Nathan, the last man back. It's a 1v1 talk, flipping early, and that ball is denied by a Golden Tiger. Ball rolling up dangerously to the backboard. Nathan will clear it away. A little bit of a double commit, but they won't get punished for it. And secures the corner boost because one touch looking to stay on this ball trying to hit up a teammate gets a pass one can he get the double yes the midfield but no one was there for holidaysburg i don't think they expected that double touch but still we see the amount of time and space that nathan had to set that up he's using it well executing those touches those light touches that can be really hard to control still though only a 1-0 lead as of the moment and now the ball back onto this blue third. Boy racing into the corner. Nathan slow here in that ghost octane. He's got one. He's setting up his teammate. Todd is there. So the ball just kind of planting its flag in the corner right now. Italian can't get to it. Todd off the side wall once again. And Nathan, that deep third back, that pass midfield. Brian searching for someone, but he was the lone golden tiger on that offensive end. Ball still is getting stuck in the half of Bishop Carroll. Not a lot going. Donald, a demo to the backfield. It's going to be Italian low boost, though. Ashley manages to get the touch. A little dangerous, but Tot spawns over on that side. Still 16 boost, trying to control it. But look at the bumps coming out here from Halsdenberg. Nathan, a little bit of a backflip, but he does fake out Nathan. Italian schemo, big clear up to the midfield, but no one up for Bishop Carroll. Still, they have got to get this ball out. They have been on defense for almost a minute now. Well, now the seed still lasting. Brian putting a touch on the backboard, unable to find it. Nathan near post play, but it's denied Italian. Dunked on there by Nathan. It's now all the way back to Brian who pushes it up high, looking for a touch here, but it's denied 
by Tot. So a bit of a volley back and forth, trading possession, and it's returned to Cinder from Donald Duck. Staying on it here, but that Octane just a bit too overzealous. Brian, backboard play, but again, that third so far back not wanting to overcommit. I think Bishop Crow, they have to be careful on these big clears. They're trying to get offense going, but they're not really looking for their teammates on these clears. And you've got to find those outlets or you're going to get stuck on your half. As we see that Hosea are trying to set it up here. That's a pass down the midfield. Very awkward play here, but Nathan was forced to respect the touch. Brian off the side while it gets the ball taken from Donald. Tot, one touch, trying to get around two. Donald oh. bumping his own teammate looking for demos. This is a good chance here. Tot, can he beat it out? Yes, he does. And the accidental team bump sets up Tot to get this first goal. Well, it's it's Nathan there cutting in that rotation and Donald being there. If Nathan rotates all the way around into net and waits for that one instead of sitting on the boost and then coming back on the midfield is going to be in a better defensive spot. But hats off here to Todd, who sees an opportunity off of the dish from Boyd Racing to start this up. And now, once again, tied back up with 60 seconds left to play. Nathan looking midfield. Donald Duck all the way out at midfield. So no real control right now, and we're still dead even. Oh, Donald trying to get that touch to midfield, but Brian also jumped. Wait a second, it's off the corner though, and Brian landing there, getting a gift wrap ball off of the corner. Works out nicely. Nathan pushed up off the corner. Tot did not expect that ball to come right at him. And just like that, Hollis Dayberg strikes back. A wise man once said we take those, and I think we do take those, as that is now a 2-1 lead here for the Golden Tigers. And Nathan looking for that kickoff goal, but instead it goes into the corner of the offense, back on the Golden Tigers with a golden opportunity, and they don't mess that one up. Time was ticking away for Bishop Carroll, and that clock just got a lot scarier. Look at the pass down to Donald. Donald reading his teammate, prepared for the pass. The synergy on point now, and Bishop Carroll, 37 seconds to go. They got to get some offense. They got to get it quick. Well, you need to get something going. That stall one out by Nathan. He's going near post here, but loses the ball, forgetting one of the most important things in Rocket League, the ball. It's now Donald looking far post, putting a touch on, but it's not threatening, just killing more of this clock. The Golden Tigers leaving into this Huskies third as they just continue to pour the pressure on and keep it away from them. Donald to pass the midfield. Nathan trying to put one away for the road. Back to Donald. Donald quick shot, but it's saved away by Italian. Now to the corner here. Nathan gets bumped off. Clear to the midfield. Tot up quickly. The quick shot like is going to be in the net. And hold on a second. There's hope, there's chance. You can build my house quickly, please, because that's not a brick. Well, it is now a singular second. It's up to the kickoff. You have to get it high and you have to have someone ready for it. So throw out all of everything. You need two cheaters here, one to the left, one to the right, and hope for not a stall. But Nathan trying to stall this one. It goes back down. It doesn't even go up. And Holidaysburg, the Golden Tigers, stave off a feverish comeback attempt. Perfect play off the kickoff to stall that to make it hit the ground. Perfectly executed. Bishop Carroll, a slight chance at the end off of the nice snipe goal from Tot. Tot leading the way for them. Two for two on his shots. It's goal score ratio. And there was some good defense. Bishop, three saves. Holidays didn't have a lot of shots. Only had seven. But compared to Bishop Carroll's three, that's all you need. It's a little bit of a low uh, offensive potential, at least for this game number one. But it definitely seemed like the time of possession was a lot more in favor of Hall's day break, at least to start out. Well, I, I know we're coming off of a game where we had like 45 shots, but, you know, it's still seven, still pretty hefty amount. You know, the offense finding their opportunities and taking them and Bishop Carroll having three saves on the backboard. And that means there was only one more that did not find the net or find a blue car. Or the Huskies stood tall in offense at times and a defense at times. The ebb and flow of the game got away from them and they could not find that equalizing goal. And game number one, though, is pretty close. Three to two, you can't really ask for a better start if you're Bishop Carroll. Obviously, you want to win the game, but yeah. uh, your next best thing is keeping it close. It wasn't a blowout, and we've seen a blowout the last two series, so clearly uh, we're getting some changes to that. But uh, unfortunately, I believe my game lobby just crashed. I don't know if that was only on my end, Foof. But uh, apparently, that, no, that was actually Rock League just farming us. So we're going to go to a quick intermission while we get this <laughs> lobby set right back up.
Sorry about that, friends. Unfortunately, we had a major interruption, minor technical difficulty on Rocket. Blame Psionics. Sometimes their servers <laughs> just do not like us, and they clearly do not like us today. That's not the first time it's happened, but we're back to go. We're ready with the players in the lobby. I'm still here. Foof is still here. They are joining now. Uh, mentioning that first game, it was pretty close, like we said, and they actually played another game, Foof. They went like halfway uh until we finally m managed to get them to leave. <laughs> I was so upset. I was having such a fun time. It was a great battle for like a good minute and a half to a minute 45. It was 0-0. They traded shots. So I'm wondering if both of these teams are going to have that, you know, unintended practice session there. If they can play off of it. And Brian doing just that as they're able to get one here. The Golden Tigers up by one. Brian completely staying where he left off. Look at that clanger. Top left placement. No one from Bishop Carroll actually jumped for that. I'm not quite sure why, but maybe they just did not expect that clinger of a shot. But nonetheless, that is a very quick goal. Eight seconds in. I think that's the fastest we've seen a goal scored in all day today. And uh, <laughs> that one's faster. Cut that, cut that to four seconds. <laughs> oh, man. An unfortunate kickoff leads to a very unfathomable touch it bounces off one car goes off of another that's one two to three but the wrong way i did not know we were playing uh, a ball pool that was incredible bounce trick shot but, <laughs> nonetheless <laughs> one to one now might as well just reverse it back to zero zero starting over and wait a second nathan we do not want to own goal again all right he's got the control though gets it past one and manages to land on it to get the 50 but italian is there just to clear down to the side donald gets the flipper set uses it to land back on the wall Hit to the backboard. This is a dangerous touch. Brian. Oh, one and a little bit of a defensive whiff here. But look, look at that play. From I Donald. mean, I mean, it's not a whiff when you save the ball with the bottom of your car, put it off the corner and then set it up. I mean, I was still in shock from that save to pass. Donald is uh, I haven't seen a play like that in a hot minute. I'm not going to lie. That was clean. Speaking of clean, look at the shot from Nathan just slightly off the crossbar. And Holiday is very just a sudden impulse of offense. Speaking of Nathan, trying to air drill a pass, but he's not able to get it past every single defender there. Still a dangerous ball now. Very awkward, a double commit, but it does work out in the end. And in time, looking to take control, but Brian says, no, I don't want you to have any time on the ball. Well, it's just needing to find their way. The Huskies do have one, but they want to find the equalizer quickly. Have a ton of time to do just that. A save coming through in the clear now off of the nose of Tot, but denied by Brian. He's waiting underneath this one, trying to find a touch. He's given a lot of space, but hits it off of the post instead. The woodwork being detrimental here to this Golden Tiger squad where it's helping out the Huskies. Sometimes the crossbar, the post, you know, the backboard, it, it's your fourth man. And I've said it plenty of times, it is the best defender in the game. And I've never been proven wrong about that. And unfortunately, it is farming Hosdayburg right now. That's a great shot, but a little bit of a miss. It faked out the defender. We've seen finally some signs of life in the offense of Bishop Carroll. But just like that, Brian's on the counter. And that one also goes off the post. And now having an opportunity in midfield to kind of reset the ball resting. And then it's 50. And guess where? It lands right back at the midfield. Donald putting a shot on here. Gets it past one. But Italian able to stand up and slow that one down. 
the Huskies looking for some offense here, but that's not the way to do it of a missed touch. It now goes all the way back towards that Golden Tiger half. A misread. Skimo looking for a touch, but he has one, but he can't find the shot. It's a few times now that I've seen Bishop Carroll with a fantastic opportunity, but they're just not able to capitalize. It's that final moment of getting that last second touch that is really the key here. That's why they've yet to get the second goal. Meanwhile, Donald trying to get it past all of the defenders. Brian getting chased for the demo, actually manages to recover, gets it past the second man, but the third man is there. Oh, speaking of the third man, Donald, another shot off the crossbar gets the demo. He's doing so much work for his team right now, just being mm -hmm. a pure menace on the back end here. I like the plays here, Italian. Pushing it past the 150 there beautifully. Donald keeping the pressure on. Now it's offense again. Brian climbing the ladder, but he can't get it because Donald's doing it themselves. I, I didn't, for a second, I didn't think I was in director cam because every single time it's just Donald on the ball. He's on the camera and I'm like, all right, hold on. Maybe he hit my Donald. keyboard. Maybe it was an accident, but no, he's just everywhere. He's so fast. He's so fast to all of these touches and it's working well. Bishop Carroll not able to find an answer to him. They got to shut him down or it's going to be a fourth goal on that board pretty soon. Well, that's in your post play, but nothing coming of it here as the defense stands that test. The Huskies trying to find an answer here. Down a, down a game and down a pair of goals. Awkwardness in front of the net as that team is just kind of pushed up against the wall, watching the dance from the floor. Nathan off of a backboard here tonight by Tot, getting another flip, but not a lot of room to work with. And the ball rocketing to the other side of the pitch and near post play. Donald can't get it to fall and Brian just keeping it close right now. So the Tigers just keeping all of the pressure and a lot of the boost. You have two goals. It doesn't matter if you don't let it off the gas pedal, and they clearly do not want to. They're trying to get another one. Nathan, a nice air dribble save away by Todd. The Bishop Carroll defense has been strong throughout, but it's like we mentioned in earlier series, if that wave keeps pounding, it's going to erode your rock. Speaking of, that's a good shot, but again, Todd there on the defense, and Nathan can't finish. It's cleared away by Italian, but still, can they get any sort of offense going with the lack of boost that they have, the amount of control and pressure that Hollisdaysbury has going on right now is on another level. Well, another level right now is the offense here for this team as they keep that pressure on. Tot instead pushing it backwards. Donald into the corner once again. He's going to try and steal the boost here and does. Playing slow there. The pace change is huge. Brian catches it on the move, but he cannot find that shot. Pass midfield. Donald over one trying to find a second touch and does it. It goes bar down and sits and he's able to find another. Eventually, the cookie does crumble. The pass in midfield to Donald. Donald gets over one, barred down. It took a few bounces, but it managed to go in regardless. I'm pretty sure Brian hit that, but Psionic server is just uh, not there today. Imagine your day be so fine. Then boom, Psionic says no goal. But all that matters, Donald and company up big, and they're going to score another one here if they're not careful. Wins the touch, wins the 50, and wins another goal. Bishop Carroll defense here. They were holding on strong throughout the game, but not the greatest touch there. And Donald able to capitalize on that one. Five to one now. And what was a pretty close game throughout, but they finally pulled away towards the end now. It's going to be facing a 2 0 deficit after this game unless a miracle happens. That's about scoring one at a time, Sis. As that ball out midfield, Tot trying to chase it, but does not have enough altitude underneath of that blue car to stay up with the ball. Now, resting at midfield, 10 seconds left. Clock just continuing to melt. And now it is going to be more just a formality at this point as another one goes in. It's 6-1, to one, the Golden Eagles up top. That's, that's a little bit of beating your opponent while they're down, but Brian will happily take that goal for the stats regardless. 6-1, to one, two seconds to go. Donald and Brian, hat trick for them off of 15 combined shots. Bishop Carroll rocking only one shot to their name this entire series. You're one for one, but uh, <laughs> you got scored on six times. Yeah, it's just unfortunate there in Holidaysburg. Up two now in the series, trying to put it away and keep the streak alive. And I mean, that is 17 shots. That is just an insane. That is absurd, sis. You're not supposed to shoot the ball 17 times in a game. Two hat tricks on Donald. I mean, a hat trick on Donald and a hat trick on Brian Black means the Golden Tigers are all the way out in front and they are trying to hold on to that momentum. It's, a, it's really grasped the situation. 17 shots, six goals, 
Bishop Carroll had six saves. Okay, six saves, and they still got scored on six times. That is how much offense is going on by Hall is Daybreak. That is how much they are controlling the pace of this game, controlling the tone. And Bishop Carroll kind of looks like they've just been hanging on for dear life on defense throughout the series. It has just been offense, 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 pound, 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 shot, 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 and eventually your defense crumbles. I mean, it's just hanging on with what you can. And the Golden Tigers, they have had all the offense, they've had all the pressure, they've had all the demos, the bumps, the boost deals, you name it. And in current laces, they've had all of the wins. And so now it's up to the Huskies to find a challenge, be it at midfield, be it in their own half, be it anywhere to grasp onto and build that momentum around. Game number three, I have seen plenty of reverse sweeps in Rocket League. Can it happen here? It Absolutely. Starts. Absolutely it can happen here. Will happen here. Well, Bishop Carroll, they've got to find their way on offense. They have got to find their groove. They've got to find some sort of hope if they don't want to see the third 3-0 of the day. Now an awkward kickoff here. Push the other way. Tot trying to reply in kind, pushing the pressure on. Brian using his teammate there. That's a new instance of using your head. Donald shot on, but denied there. Near post by Tot. So series hanging the balance here and the Huskies need to find something and Donald and company want to find an early lead, but denied again by this stingy defense. Ryan, a quick hit to the midfield. Donald's there for the cleanup again. A little ping pong action going between the two. Now Tot to his own corner. High roll. Let's it go really high, actually. Leaves it. Get an opportunity here, maybe for boy racing. A little bit awkward, though. Flipping a little bit sideways. Now Tot and it clears his midfield, but who other than Brian to be there for the cleanup? Tot low 50, trying to get one more. Can't get the flick, though. A little bit of a panic touch. Nathan trying to crowd this again for a shot. Maybe flicks it over one. Does so. Donald's on. there. Italian makes the save, but still it's this Bishop Carroll defense. They're just hold, hanging on by a thread. They have got to get this ball out of their half. Ball now resting on this golden octane in front of their net. A pinch all the way out. Tot looking for it here, but the redirect going backwards. Italian, the last man back. Nathan trying to set it up. Brian going for a bump, but it's just a bit too late. So the ball finding its way into the corner once again. Tot and company looking for an offensive opportunity to make theirs. As they you said, they've had very few shooting opportunities. Trying to create one here. It's up high. Tot climbing that ladder, trying to find a touch here. That octane is there, but Nathan denies it. Well, the pass to the midfield. Todd, can he get there? No, not quite fast enough as Nathan had that cleaned up. Now Nathan, speaking of Bush, going on the counter, gets it over one. Can he get it past the second one? Saved away by Italian. It's a very dangerous ball. Down for the quick shot. It's going to be a bouncer. And it's going to go in off of the beautiful play from Nathan to get it past two. And Donald's there for the clean. Well, a save and a clear are always two different things, Sis. And unfortunately, that adage lives true here. The save but not the clear means it's a one goal lead here for the Golden Tigers. Carol need something at least maybe off the kickoff not into your own net though that's dangerous and boy racing I think there thought that he was gonna have to get the clear tot was back but maybe not fast enough and unfortunate miscue here on the two leads to an own goal absolutely speedy kickoff there to start it all and then having just an unfortunate series of events in front of the net means it's 2-0 here and the golden tigers looking to extend I don't high off the backboard, trying to use his flip to get there, but the ball just fell off a little bit too far. Now Tot on the counter with the side ball. Hits it up high, trying to get one touch. Gets, so it gets a flip. Oh, oh my goodness. You're, you better put that one on TikTok. I'm never going to install that app, but I might if you give me clips like that. Tot saving the flip, taking the touch, and biting into this lead and breaking it in half. Okay, my, my question though is, Tot, where was that all series long? Where was that offense? Where was that ceiling shot? Because your team has needed it and you're you're giving it to them now, but is it too late? Can they get that again from Ty? If Ty is the one that you have to lead with your nigh on shining armor, then by golly, you better do it. If not, you're getting 3 0. But here, that's a good pass opportunity for Italian, but saved away by Donald. A nice read off the backboard. But Bishop Carroll, that goal seems to have given them some life here in the offense. They're looking to set up their teammates, but no Todd backed up there. I think you kind of have to be prepared for that pass. Well, you just want to be always ready for a pass. Donald looking for something here, being a lone ranger. There is one high, one low, but they cannot get it to go through. Nathan into the corner once again. Todd off the side over here, trying to find a teammate that pass. Setting up Italian, who gets a bit of a spoiler touch. Boy racing into the corner, chasing, and Brian with a slowdown at midfield. 
trying to stall this one out. 123 seconds left to play in both of these teams. Their offenses can score in very opportunistic ways. So it's about playing smart. Boy, racing the last man here, playing smart in front of the net. But all three players there from the Gold Tigers, an Italian with a huge retreat to his own side. Defense looking a little bit in shambles here for Hollisdaysburg. Speaking of defense, this is dangerous for Bishop Carroll. Nathan trying to get it past one, but unable to do so. Ryan for the cleanup, forces a double command to pinch in the midfield. Donald's there for the shot, and oh, oh that one hurts to see an accidental backflip trying to get the read out. Oh, that one hurts. Well, that's an own goal because I don't think it was going to go in. It was a post and off, but instead hitting the front grill of that octane means it's three to one. Got the kickoff now, approaching nine seconds to go left in this game. Another blazing kickoff off the sidewall, cleared away by Italian. Got to get something going. You need all the offense you can. Getting bumps here, trying to get all the bumps that he can, but it's just not enough to get these players off of the ball here. Now Nathan on the counter, high to the backboards. Is going to be able to get here in enough time? No, Brian dives. That's all three players for Hollis Aberg. Cheated up. Todd will look for the solo play, but he's not going to be able to go very far as he's running out of boost. Trying to save a little bit there with the flip reset. Italian off the backboard here, but there is just no one here on the Huskies. They had a straight line team. One at one goal, one at midfield, and one at their goal. You would think that they were the team up by two. They need to start playing a little bit more aggressive positionally, at least, as that's a miscue there. It should be a 2v1 opening here, but no. Tot deciding to go off the side. We're going to give this time able to defense to build back up. Flip reset, oh. keeping it high, keeping it low over one, but giving that time back to the defense, unfortunately, does not a good thing for an offense. Uh, I like the shot attempt, but not in that situation. You had a 2v1, you had so much time to work with your teammate, and you wasted a lot of it by going up the sidewall. And that time is precious right now. You're approaching 19 seconds left in this game, and you've, you're down two goals. you got to get something. You have to get it now. Donald trying to get it past one is just wasting so much time off the clock as Brian will clear it down to the side. Bishop Carroll, they're running out of time. Donald mm. trying to pressure this. Brian hits it past two, and that's going to do it. Mathematically impossible now. Brian keeping it there. Tot just trying to push it on the ball, falling down just a formality at this point. Just keeping it up, trying to keep it alive and find a feels good goal. The Huskies pass back, but the ball not really working with them here. It goes off the side wall and falls down. Great looks there from Hollis Dayberg. They played an incredible, phenomenal series. Lights out. Not as many shots this time around. Only eight to their name, but that's all they needed to secure this 3-1 to one victory in game number three for the third sweep of the day. I, I've i seen a lot of Rocket League booth. I've mentioned that before, but I don't know if I've seen three consecutive sweeps. That might actually do it for my career on that one. Yeah, it's an interesting way to start a season and definitely an interesting week see a lot of teams sometimes split or you'll have one team that has a blood win and then everyone else keeps it close but no three three o's is an interesting way to start the season off so you know a lot of film and a lot of tape and a lot of good and a lot of bad that can be fixed and so this really brings a lot of excitement to a lot of these teams as they can find ways to get better as the season progresses you mentioned that lots of film, lots of tape. I know a lot of players like to go back and watch the VOD review and see what mistakes they made. They like to save the replays. Whatever you're doing, I hope that you're looking over them, seeing the mistakes you made, seeing the good things that you did, mm -hmm. taking advantage of both of those, applying them to your game. This is only week one. Like I mentioned, this is the first stream, first week of the six-week season. A lot to learn, a lot to take from it. The teams that dominated, dominated the teams that got blown out. You got a little bit more work to do, but you got to put in the hours, put in the work, get better. But nonetheless, Foof, take it away. Well, you know, hope you guys enjoyed the show here. And this is going to be uh, it for us today, at least in Rocket League. But make sure you come back tomorrow because starting at 3.30 Eastern time, we're going to be having the high school league's Overwatch season kicking off with Division I taking place here and Division II taking place at the Tech High School League. So that's going to be starting at 4.30, that second one. So make sure you follow there and make sure you're ready for those, sis, because we have a wonderful man over there. Make sure you follow him on Twitter in any way, Twitch maybe. And we hope you've had a great time because I did. Thank you so much for joining us. And this is us signing off.